folks? I think we're ready to go. So I will call the uh, meeting of the uh, Montpelier Board of Abatement to order. Um, the first item on the agenda is to approve the agenda, and I assume everybody is satisfied with, uh, with the agenda as, uh, as it is presented to you. Um, I'm going to give a little overview of how things are going to work because by the, by the end of the ones we did, uh, the first round we did, we cut, so we were making, moving through them very efficiently and hopefully we'll be able to do the same thing in these uh, upcoming three meetings. And, and that is, um, I will, uh, as chair, I will uh, rule that all of the filings that, uh, that the parties have, uh, have submitted are received into evidence. And, uh, <clears throat> and so nobody needs to say anything about anything you've submitted in writing. We've got all there, and it's going to be part of the record of the, of the proceeding. Second, we have a set of, uh, of several questions that we'll need to go through with regard to every property. And it's going to seem like a very uh, mechanical and kind of uh, rote uh, process to go through, however, We've uh, developed these questions to uh, identify the specific information we, we need to get to uh, to make make the rulings on each of the uh, requests for abatement. And so, for instance, we have uh, we have uh, eight or so requests for abatement. Uh, tonight with uh, with two different property owners and so for each one of those is a separate request and we'll go through the uh, through the set of questions for each one of those uh, those requests and and then as we did last time we will we do not anticipate making a ruling on the request for abatement tonight we will uh, uh, on our third meeting what we will do is we will have a deliberative session and we will go over all of the requests for abatement and apply the uh, criteria that uh, <clears throat> that we have for the, for abatement and uh, to each one of the requests and we will be doing that so that uh, we're applying the same standards to every one of the uh, requests and we'll be treating everyone the same and everyone fairly. Um, does anyone have any questions before we proceed? Mary. Um, one of the items in our packet, not for tonight, but in the packet, is somebody asking for an abatement based on income, not on flood loss. And um, I missed some of our meetings. I was curious if we asked for documentation with regard to what their income levels are, as opposed to just a statement that I don't have the income to pay the tax. In, well, there, I think what, I haven't read that packet piece of it myself, but we did have someone who applied for an income-based abatement last time around, and we told her, well, you don't really have enough information, enough documentation, so we requested her to come back with more information. And so we'll see what she presents to us. So we'll do that. Yeah. yeah. So whenever, I think she's up for the, uh, 11. For the 11. Yeah. So she can present whatever evidence she has, and it will satisfy or not satisfy the members of the board, depending on what, uh, how we evaluate her evidence. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. <clears throat> and we'll start with, uh, with Tim Ayer. Good evening, everyone. Thanks for coming in, Tim. And we have seven properties from here, it looks like, right? Uh, yeah. 
Yes. And a couple on school, State Street, one on School Street, and the rest on Elm Street. And so I'm going to ask you to raise your right hand. Do you solemnly affirm, subject to the pains and penalties of perjury, that the testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. All right. We will <clears throat> go through the, uh, through the questions. And these questions are based on not just on what the uh, Board of Abatement finds relevant, but based on uh, the standards established by the legislature in the uh, one of the first bills that they passed in uh, in this session, dealing specifically with the uh, with abatements related to the flood. So, first property is 15 State Street, and with regard to 15 State Street. Was there a reduction uh, of value of at least 50%? No. Um, did you use, lose the access to that property for at least 60 days? Yes. And did you lose utilities for at least 60 days? You know, um, we lost, like, no, not utilities for 60 days. Okay, and, and well, I guess we can tell you well, which property is 15 State Street. It's the one in front of you know the clock, the Vermont National clock. Mm -hmm. It's that one right, right there. Okay, the old Vermont National Bank building. Uh huh. Uh, you did not have a loss of utilities for 60 days. Okay. No. Uh, it was not condemned. No. Was was it uh, considered substantially damaged by the city? No. Okay. No. Outbuildings, no. Um, did you have a, a loss of income for the property? Yes. And uh, what what did that consist of? First floor. Th this one, yeah. The first floor is still um, unoccupied. We lost the tenant that was there. We have done you know uh, ninety percent of the repairs, so we've lost the floor, first floor tenant. But this one is a little more unique. There's no damage on the second floor, but our elevator got damaged. So some of the tenants on the second and third floor <clears throat> asked for either uh, relief in the rent or no rent. Uh, the yoga studio um, left, you know, uh, did not stay. So we had loss of income, you know, I would say 50% on the second and third floor and 100% on the first floor. And the first floor, like I say, is the, you know, still um, unoccupied at this point in time. But mind you, you know, last week, I think starting uh, April 1st, we rented one office downstairs, uh, $400 a month. So that will start April 1st. Mm -hmm. And uh, so you say that the, the first floor was damaged to the point of being unusable up yes. until April 1st? Well, it's even going to, I don't know if anybody knows, but it's that office to the right as you walk in um, is a small office. That, that's what's been um, rented. The rest of the space downstairs has not been rented at this point in time. Yeah, has it been restored to the point where it could be rented, where yes. it's usable space? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Um, and do you have uh, information about the total? Square footage of the building compared to the damaged area. Yeah, I, I do. I, I, I'm sorry, I only brought seven copies, but I did that on for all the buildings. Great. Um, I, I can Thanks. email this to anybody or uh, what, but I did break that out and I used it <clears throat> off the you know the cards that were given yeah. the city. And, and we have the property yeah. cards here. Yeah, yeah. we included mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. Does anyone have any? Tim. Quick question. Um, you said no utilities. So how's that building heated? Is it district heat? Well, that was one of my questions here. It is district heat. Okay, so you didn't have heat. We, we, yeah. It's it, it, all that got ruined, right? It, correct. We still we got partial heat. Yeah. Um, but and it was used. Uh, yeah, that's a good question, Tim. And I was going to bring it up afterwards. It, the situation, we've got billed $7,000 for 
for heat for three months based on the previous year's consumption. <clears throat> and, you know, we weren't, you know, one, nobody was there. And it, two, it didn't work properly that we had to subsidize it with electric heaters. Um, so when Steve Ribellini, my partner, talked to the city about that, they said that had to be abated as well. Um, so, you know, we have not had and still don't have heat uh, working at that, um, at that building. So you're not getting heat from the district heat system at this point? You know, we, we are getting some heat. There is, there is some, but it's not working to its um, efficiency. And, you know, I, I can get more details. Uh, Steve brought me up to speed on that um, this morning. Um, but, you know, for, for all of Texas purposes, we aren't getting that building. That heat is not working. Okay. Mary. So that would be a separate abatement request, correct? I As think so. To being into this. Yeah, it's an interesting question. I had, I don't know that we've dealt with a request for abatement for district heat payments as opposed to, like, water. Water and sewer. <laughs> I mean, we would do it the same as water and sewer, but I mean, we need specific information as to what's going on with yeah. that decision. So why don't you get us that information? Get it to John. Okay. Sounds great. And, and yeah. what are you looking for there? Just uh, the use of the bill? Um, yeah, wait, wait. Pati particular there? Yeah. Some sort of documentation of the law. Okay. Yeah. Do you need to buy a certain time? Well, it would be a, for a separate hearing. So yeah. as just as soon as you got it to me, the sooner we would be able to. Although, actually, at this point, we may be scheduling those hearings into the, the June meeting. Um, let me check and tell you yeah. when that was. <laughs> sure. That was a what? What, you know, what, what the, the previous year was previous and what we got was, billed in, and, and, and what, how, what, what the condition. Yeah. 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 Okay. We are required to hold a Board of Abatement meeting uh, June uh, 4th. So uh, we've started just scheduling folks into that. It's a ways off. Okay. But it's uh, maybe better than keeping this group running straight through for another few months, is my thinking anyway. So that can be up for the group, though, if you wanted to meet earlier. Well, you didn't know what you're getting yourselves into, did you? Yeah. What I'm gonna <laughs> what I'm going to suggest as a ruling if and you can all can let me know if if you have any objection to that is that rather than make tim come back to a hearing to uh, to prove his uh, uh heating losses that we just hold the record open allow him to submit documentation and then include that as part of this uh steve lives right next door i'll have him do that one he'll be back by then Mm -hmm. Does that seem like a good approach to all of you? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Thank you. Great. All right. We're next to 17 State Street, right next door. Yeah. <laughs> and and so what? Could you just tell us what building that is? It's right next door, the old uh, Dennis Ricker and Brown building. Mm -hmm. And the same questions I'm not going to ask if you had a 50% or uh, reduction in value because I don't think any of these have. So That's correct. Uh, uh, did you use, lose use of the building for at least 60 days? Yes. And how, how long did you lose use of the building? You know, it, um, half of the downstairs was... Um, I think about 80 days um, where the nail um, uh, tenant is, the nail salon. And then um, the store actually was back in, um, you know, somewhere uh, right around 60 days. Um, we, uh, Steve said this morning that it was, um, of course, July 7th, and he think they were, he was back in by Labor Day. So. Uh -huh. 
that that so it was only half of the downstairs that was out for more than 60 days and the other one was probably 57 days or something mm -hmm. and which store is that that's the clothing store okay mm -hmm. um, and did you lose utilities for more than 60 days no okay that one is not um, district eight there okay not condemned not substantially damaged no land or outbuildings uh, did you have a loss of income? Yes. And what's what's the period of time? That that period of time you were just talking it, about? It was two months um, uh, for one tenant that we uh, didn't uh, charge rent, and then it was three months on the other tenant. Okay. And total square foot feet versus damaged square feet. That's in the sheet you gave us. Correct. Okay. Next, moving around to One School Street. Um, and what building is this? Um, that's the one on the corner, um, uh, Uncommon Market. Would you mm -hmm. be there? Yep. Okay. And uh, was, it, was there a loss of usage for 60 days or more? Yes. And how, how long? It's still unoccupied. And it's, and it's unusable at this point, right? It is unusable. We, we are, um, after you know, a long time trying to get a tenant in there, um, we're now moving that into um, apartments. Mm -hmm. And um, I would expect another 60 days um, before they're finished. And um, to the extent, I know this is uh, a little tricky to, uh, to compute, but can you estimate how how much of the time of it of the bu building being vacant is is because of the conversion of use from store to to apartments versus uh, the place being could have been occupied as a store if uh, if there were a tenant? You know, if there was a tenant, I mean. One of the problems there was were a lot of the people that were interested in a store was concerned about the flooding again. So we were having a hard time, you know, getting a retail tenant in there. So that's when we've decided to move it to, um, uh, you know, the apartments. It, it is hard. I, I, would, I would guess it would have been um, four months to try to get it there was a lot of um, stuff we had to take out of that first floor mm -hmm. um, and getting back in. Uh, and then it, I still wouldn't have had a tenant because of the flood. Yep. Um, but I probably could have had it ready for a store, you know, three to four months. Tim. Upper levels, you get residential apartments? All residential and not um, damaged. They all stayed. And they all stayed. Yep. The door going into the upstairs um, hallway didn't get any water, take any water in. Uh, that's the wrong side. The wrong side. So yeah, we were fortunate to be able to keep all the tenants there. I think it's great that you're getting more housing in that building. Yeah, thank you. I think it's going to look neat getting it back to the old look. Yeah, there and, and the other buildings on Elm Street, I think it's great. Correct. On, we, uh, we, need, we need housing, so. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> no outbuildings, no land, not substantially damaged. Income loss? Yes. And uh, for the same period of time that we've been talking? Correct. Okay. And the total square feet versus the damaged square feet, the whole first floor, and, and not a, none of the rest of the building? That's correct. Okay. Basement, I mean, but... Oh, yeah. What, what's the story with the basement? You know, the basement had um, where the um, electric panels were and uh, the furnace was. So, you know, that one was totally underwater and removing those um, units up to the fir above the first floor. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, I didn't include the square footage um, of the basement in my calculation. I, I don't know how you determine that or not, but, I mean, that... The basement was, you know, again, it was 
probably four feet up in the first floor. Uh -huh. Okay. Do you yeah. include basement we, damage? We have not been including basement damage. Yeah, okay. no. Other than taking into account the lost systems. Yeah. Like the heat of the electric. Yeah, and, and we did lose the electric in, in <clears throat> The heat in that building. Yep. Okay. Yeah, I forgot to ask that question. Okay. So you had lost utilities for more than sixty days, obviously. Correct. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Any other questions from members of the board on this one? Okay. Forty-one Elm Street. We're just moving right right down the street. Yeah. Right next door. Okay. And <clears throat> did you? Use loss of the building, lose use of the building for at least 60 days. Yes. And do you have an estimate of how many days? Well, uh, half of the space is still unoccupied where the restaurant was, and um, the other one was um, six months. Okay. Um, and utility loss? Uh, the, just the heat, but okay. I, I don't think I don't think we lost it more than sixty days though. We okay. were able to get that back up and running. The electric was already up, um, so we didn't lose the electricity. So I, I would we did lose some utilities, but not more than sixty days. Okay. Um, no land or outbuildings, uh, income loss. Yes. And for. What period would you say? Half the building's nine months, and the other half the first floor for six months. Okay. And only only the first floor, the second floor. Uh, second is floor it, apartments, same as one school street. We were able to keep the tenants in the second floor. Mm -hmm. There are two apartments on that second floor. And is there a third floor? No. Nope. 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 Just two. Okay. Nope. Okay. Members of the board, any other questions on this one? Okay. This is, um, you know, if you see right, Hippie Chickpea had the the restaurant there. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. This is the building that uh, where the Blue Heron used to be many years ago, right? Yeah. We we, we bought it from Jeff Jacobs. Uh, I think it's one of the only buildings he maybe sold. <laughs> and. Uh, the hot tubs, you know, were left in the middle of the night, and uh, there, when we bought it, it was just, you know, the, the holes left. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I had quite a bit of history there. And you're, you had your office there for a while. Yeah, right? we did. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, Fifty-seven to sixty-three Elm Street. That's the next building over, presumably. That, that's correct. Yeah. Okay. And. Across the street. Across the street? Well, you know, across it goes 41 Elm Street, one school, and then on the same side across the street is that, you know, 57 to 63. Okay. And did you have lose usage for at least 60 days? Yes. And do you have an estimate of how long that was? Um, that one was um, th three months for one tenant and five months for the other tenant. Okay. And utilities? Up, up and running before 60 days. Okay. Um, land or outbuildings? No. Um, lost income? The, yes. The months you already identified. Correct. Mm -hmm. And the damage to the total square feet, the damage. It's what, on that. It's on the sheet. Yeah, on the mm -hmm. sheet. I can get it for you, though. And it's, for, it's first floor tenants, only second floor. Okay. Yeah, they, they, the they didn't, they didn't um, come in for a while, but their, their space was you know, probably available. I, you know, we did all the cleaning and all that kind of stuff. So um, they were they were probably not there for 60 days, um, but they had the ability to use the space. So. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, 
35 Elm Street. That's to the right of, you know, 41 Elm Street. It's where the chop shop was, a uh, tattoo and a, and a beauty salon. Uh -huh. um, all three tenants did not relocate back. Um, and uh, the first floor was totally you know, underwater. And the second floor where the attorney's office is um, didn't lose, you know, they had the ability to go back in. So it was just the first floor. Okay. And it's still being, you know, reconstructed um, right now. And we hopes to have a, a deli and a store there uh, in the next 30 to 45 days. Oh, cool. We're just, this is just 35. 35. Okay, thanks. Mm -hmm. And so usage loss for at least 60 days, definitely. Yep. Utilities? Um, yes, we have lost utilities, electric, um, for more than 60 days. Uh huh. And the heat was up on the second floor, so we did not lose heat. It was just electric. Mm hmm. And. Which of those buildings is the land connected to, the parking, the parking lot connected to? Is it this one or the other one? I'm sorry? Which one of these buildings is the parking lot connected to? Um, the parking lot's connected to that building. Okay. Yeah. And that's, that's it, just it, the You way. know, there, there was damage. You know, we, we have um, filled in with a large pothole and, and, you know, that kind of stuff. So we have had some um, you know, damage to the parking lot. Mm -hmm. um, I, on 59 to 63, the one we just talked about, yeah. I did repave the entire front of that building. It got, it got beat up pretty bad with you know, a lot of trucks that were um, trying to fix the apartment buildings that were connected to that one. Um, you know, dumpsters that were in there trying to add, you know, load. So that, that got beat up pretty bad, that, that parking lot in front of the building. And the other one we've just filled in with some pot the potholes that were eroded. And it, it, it wasn't like it was brand new to begin with, that parking lot. Yeah, it was kind of rough to begin with. Yeah, yeah. kind of rough to begin mm -hmm. with. But it certainly didn't help it. Yep. Um, income loss, we've uh, established that. And the uh, ratio of total squared feet, square feet versus damage. Square feet, ju just the first floor. Just the first floor, yeah. Okay. And 38 Elm Street. Across the street, um, the Thai restaurant is in that building. Okay. We have a seamstress to the right of that. The seamstress got totally um, wiped out. We had put a, an apartment in the back of that on the first floor, and that got totally wiped out. Um, the basement, um, we lost electricity there. Um, downstairs, it affected the restaurant. Um, I, I don't know if it was a total 60 days. Um, you know, it was one of the situations where we had it up and running right after, and then, you know, determined that we needed to replace the electricity. Mm -hmm. so I don't think the electricity was out for more than 60 days there. Okay. Um, and then the, the restaurant, um, because of, you know, two things, people weren't coming downtown um, with a flood, we gave them a relief on their rent as well. So we had, you know, I put, I think, um, on, on, on 38 Elm, I put 40% of the first floor. Mm -hmm. I didn't know how, you know, the restaurant didn't get damaged itself, you know. So, I, again, that was somewhat of a guess to the extent that we, I based that more on income than on square footage. Uh -huh. And what's in the upper floors? Is that apartments? Yeah, we had just been putting apartments in, you know, when we bought the building from Jay Hooper. There are um, five apartments on the second and third floor. Mm -hmm. Not damaged at all. Not damaged. Right. 
Just um, just the one on the first floor that we put in. Mm -hmm. So there's just one apartment. Utility loss, you said not 60 days. Um, income loss, that's. Yeah, I mean, we had loss of rent at the restaurant. We lost the um, seamstress for six months. Mm -hmm. And um, the apartment is just about ready to be put back um, with a tenant. Uh huh. So. And the total square feet versus damaged square feet that is in the sheet you submitted. Yeah. Again, I, I didn't know. I, like I said, I, I based that forty percent more on loss of income. Yeah. Probably the, the actual square foot that was damaged underwater was probably more like. 25% or 30% of the first okay. floor. So I, I don't, didn't know how to really answer that question. Or, yeah, or, that's fair. We'll, we'll have to deal with that, but yeah. Okay. I didn't want to make it too easy for you guys. <laughs> yeah, I appreciate that. <laughs> okay, do you have is any members of the board closing? For any of these properties, are there things that you could have done to make any of that um, the repairs faster, or was it like lack of available contractors or suppliers or that kind of thing? You know, it, some of it was funds trying to you know get the, the money to do it, and we've only had so many people to go out there. We I know what we had uh, what seven or eight buildings. Steve had some other buildings, so it was a matter of trying to get contractors in and, mm -hmm. and funds to, to do it. Uh, Jack, these are all asking also for abatement of personal property. Is that something that we should deal with now or? I, I don't think I realize that. I don't think, uh, what, did I fill that form out? Anyway? We, didn't, we didn't have any personal property other than the, the store, you know, I bought out the assets. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. yeah, it's just part of that the section checked off, so I just wanted to bring it up in case. Yeah, we really didn't have any that. substantial personal property. Okay. Thanks, Val. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. Do you have anything else you'd like to tell us before you go? No. Uh, Thank you for that okay. information on the heat system, and I'll get back to you with that additional information. And thanks for everybody Great. taking the time out of their lives to handle this. This is not an easy job. Thanks for coming in. Okay. Mm -hmm. Have a great night. You too. Okay. CY Norwich Hotel. Sorry? Should we try to make room for everybody? Um, do you want to both sit up at the table? For all three? Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So, hi, folks. Uh, thanks for coming in. So, uh, who's going to be testifying tonight? Hey, would you solemn, solemnly affirm the testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth under the pains and penalties of perjury? Okay, great. Why don't you tell us who you are? And so my name is Hitesh Patel, actually, uh, and this, this is Steve, and this is Ravi, actually. So uh, we are the owners of Capital Plaza Hotel. Uh, we just took over the property back on purchased the property back on July 6th, uh, as you probably everybody is aware of. Yeah. And Impeccable three days later, timing. we had a major flood. I mean, you know, and, and we've been working ever since on the property to get it open. Mm -hmm. uh, we are very close to open now. Um, hotel, we are looking to open in the next few weeks, uh, actually next, within the next two weeks. Mm -hmm. And restaurants probably, J. Morgan is probably going to be a few weeks after or maybe earlier. Uh, Middle of May. Uh -huh. uh, so, I'm. I mean, I'm here to see if there is a abatement request I have made. Which, if there's anything you guys can do for us, so that you know we can, we can, it can help us. You know, pick yep. 
the now we have we have the uh, two uh, requests for the for the hotel building the commercial the real estate and the personal property tax and the one on eight Barry Street but we'll take we'll take them in order with regard to uh, to the hotel um, and I think we know the answers to all these questions, so I'm going to go over them all with you. Um, you you did suffer a loss of usage for more than 60 days. Yes. And as of today, you still have no no use of any of the building. Is that accurate or? Yes. So, yeah, the hotel, restaurants, all the parking spaces. You know, I mean, we have a use of it, but. It's it used to generate a revenue which had a value in the past, you know, which would be paid for, but right now there's no value on it. You know? mm -hmm. And um, and as far as the, we have some tenants right now, if you, uh, all the major tenants are not paying any rents and they, because they cannot use their facility there. We have very small tenants, about six, six, six or seven tenants they're paying, which is very small. Uh, we will manage to get them in place probably about depending on the time, you know, about four months ago, I think. Mm -hmm. right and were the these, are these tenants in the uh, in the office uh, towers? Office towers, no. No. Uh, the six-story towers, we had a tenant up, up on the sixth floor. Actually, he's leaving right now. He vacated the property too today. So, uh -huh. uh, and the bank is, they are in a box. They are not paying anything, and they are looking to open back, going back in the space next month. So, and then we have, those are the two big tenants we had on it. Everybody else is up, these are small tenants. You know, we have a few tenants on second floor who left. It's few of them are still there. Mm -hmm. And along with the hair, so, hair salon and the, the adult care one, they're still there actually right now. So. Mm -hmm. And uh, Vermont Public Radio, if they moved out? They are still they, there. They're still there? They're still there. And were there, was there a point where they were unable to use the space or did they pretty much yes, stay? Yes, so, yeah, they were unable to use the space uh, on the, until we got them some electricity. So the, as you probably already know, the building was built in phases. So we had to redo all the electrical, all the HVAC, all file alarm, sprinkler, modify all the sprinklers on the space there as well as all the finishes. and. We had to, when we opened up the walls and everything, you know, we had to do a lot of major repairs also, also because the building was so old. Um, so until until we got them, they couldn't use the space. And even when we had them, we didn't, we don't have working elevators. We're still working on one right now, that the one in the lobby, which only serves the four-story part. The six-story part, the, the, the elevator is still not in operational, and they haven't even started working on it because they're so backed out with them with the material, mm -hmm. uh, which they are promising us to get that one up and running in end of May or June sometime. So so, so the public radio, uh, Vermont Public Radio, they, they got up and running as soon as we got them the power, which was also after quite a big time. You know, more than, so they, they've been in and out. I mean, I'm not sure how much time they spend over there, but mm -hmm. in and out since then, using the stairs. Uh-huh. So. And the, uh, the six-story hotel tower, will you be able to open that up even before the uh, elevators back in? So we, we, the six-story tower does have access until the fourth floor through the lobby elevators. So we okay. do have an inspections on those elevators also coming up on Monday. Uh, so we will, if we get the blessings from the the elevator, state elevator inspector, you know, we should have that elevator operate, operate in operation mm -hmm. until the fourth floor. Uh -huh. So the other two floors, we may not be able to do anything. Plus the biggest talent, tenant that we have on the sixth floor, on the sixth story tower, they vacated actually right now. So they empty out all the, all the furniture, mm -hmm. everything, and they're doing it right now. So. And is that because of the, uh, the access issue? Um, it could have been because of the access issue or they just found a different spot, different place, you know, that's better. I'm, I'm not sure um, right now. But they did, they, all they tell us is that they're downsizing. Uh -huh. That's all they're saying. 
Yep. So you definitely had more than 60 days loss of usage. You definitely had more than 60 days loss of utilities. Um, the property was not condemned by the city. No. Um, and it was not considered substantially damaged, more than 50% loss in pro value. Um, are there any damage to land or outbuildings on the property? So the parking lot, yeah, we had a, we, I mean, we had to redo, we had to dig all the, we had to relocate all the transformers from, you know, and then redo everything on exterior side also. So there's a lot of parking lot is gonna be, have to be redone as well, you know, just because we had to dig all the, and redo all the, under the underground electrical mm -hmm. for it. So. And income loss. Yeah, it's uh, virtually 100%. Virtually 100%, yeah, we have. From, it's from June, or from July up to April. Yes. And possibly more no. in future as well, because we don't know, like, what's, how things will be, uh, uh, come around, you know. Carrie, you wanted to correct me. Yeah, I'm, I'm a little unclear on which tenants have been there when. So, so I just want to get really clear about that. Yeah. Um, so you said your sixth floor tenant yeah, just VHB, left. VHB just left, but they were not paying any rent since but so they were there, but they weren't paying any rent. Yeah, because they couldn't get access okay. to the sixth floor. And then, and the bank is not there now. Bank is right? there. Bank is there. they did a box out there just for the for the you know, and then we didn't want them to leave also, so we kind of had to work with them you know at the time. Yeah. But they are not paying any rent as well until they move back. Okay. And that was closed for a long time. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then, the hair salon is open now. Hair salon is open, and yeah. you said that was about four months ago that it opened I, yeah, back up. And is there another smaller tenant? Yeah, so there's a tenant, uh, the adult, 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 adult yeah, adult. woman adult care. So about tenant. four months ago, they moved back in. They moved back in. Okay, but they have a pretty small tenant on rents okay. and everything compared to the other. And there's a we do have four, four other tenants upstairs. The Vermont Radio is one of them. And on the second there. floor, they, they are there. They moved back in when you got power were, back. Yeah, they, they, they kind of going in and out, but they were not really mobilized completely. Mm -hmm. and, um, and then there are other tenants up there too? Yeah, there are a few Who small else? other tenants. You know, one of them is uh, the, the the social worker. So, yeah. I think so, the total rent is about $2,500 right now between them. And so they were out for a while, but they came, when did they come back in? So we actually, as soon as the like, power, we were able to manage. Actually, the power, we the, so it, we had to do it in little bit phases, right? It took us like a few months for us to get temporary power there. Then it had to be down again when we were changing the transformers and all the, so, so at first we had to redo the power, temporary power, so to know exactly where things were first, because the building was such a hole and uh, and and we had to bring in all the subs from different places to get this going. So so we had to do that, and then we had to change, move all the power from the basement to all these upper floors for entire building actually. So so that that took us it because of that there was a shutdown as well for them. So as we actually gave them the space as soon as the power was back on, but they could not really, some of them couldn't really utilize it because there was no elevator, you know, they had to take steps. So. construction zone still, right. so we, it was kind of dangerous yeah. for them to walk through. Right. Okay. So you weren't charging rent until those several tenants moved in four months ago, and then you said it was $2,500 a month between 20, all yeah. of them that you've been getting for the past four months. Yeah. It's probably. Tish has been a little generous. It's probably two months that the hair salons been open. Yeah, I mean, I mean, <laughs> we had to do some work we, for hair salons just so that she can come back over there and, you know, we kind of help her with She's a good schooling person. and this, that, and all a few items, you know. Yeah. But, I mean. She's been great. So as far as the loss goes, yes, there is a, it is a 100% loss uh, on the parking side. I mean, parking side, we are still waiting on the parking system that is, there is a delay, you know, they're saying another three weeks for it to come in, but we don't know exactly right now. Um, and obviously we're waiting for the, the, par the parking lot, we'll be waiting for it, for the better weather to finish it off after, you know. And, and 
as far as the other loss goes, I mean, you know, I don't think we will be able to replace the talent at the moment, the way things are going in the market, you know, that, that's on the sixth floor. So mm -hmm. I am, I'm, I am, we are projecting that that's going to be stay vacant for a little bit until, because it's, it's, it's on the sixth floor as well, so. Mm -hmm. But, but when that, when the elevator is restored, going all the way up to the sixth floor, then if you don't get a tenant into that space, it'll be because of market conditions rather than because of the flood, right? Yes. Okay. Um, yeah, go ahead. I've got one. When you're done. Go, go ahead. Um, so I uh, had read a, a news story that um, you all have been planning to do a bunch of renovations as soon as you bought the building and you actually had folks on site. Can you estimate how much of the building you had planned to have vacant while you did renovations um, versus, I mean, obviously <laughs> things yeah. changed, but what was your initial plan? So um, initial plan actually only, that, that building was just converted to Hilton Tapestry. So there was not much of a punch list that they have given us to the property. There was only a few minor items, you know, that uh, that we were supposed to connect to Hilton, the TV, you know, the services that comes up by Hilton and all that. They did not convert it that, so we need to do that part. Then they also wanted the parking system to be connected to the Hilton property management system, so that the guests would be able to use their guest key card instead of paper tickets and all that. That was one of them, and then. Uh, we had to change a uh, desk chair, you know, just one chair in the room, and vanity mirrors. They wanted lighted mirrors, you know, which half of the rooms already had them, and half of the room didn't have them. So it was very minor peep, actually, from them. We didn't have to do a lot, lot, you know. So did you plan to have any hotel rooms offline during that process, <clears throat> or you were just going to work that into? No, we didn't have any plans, you know. It was, we were just going to work that. Why, 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 why. Mm -hmm. Okay, Tim. Just process question, Jack. So we had a series of these hearings before, and we decided we were just doing the first two payments. Are we continuing with that, or are we looking at something bigger? I think that's a question we should uh, discuss when we come uh, when we come to our deliberative session, because. We're obviously now into the new year. We're past those first two installments. Yeah. Everybody else was able to come back where they have. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Do we have anybody coming back? Um, oh, by coming back, I meant yeah. they were open. I'm sorry. Like the other requests, they are back in business. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Except for um, the previous. Uh, where where the toy store used to be, right? Yeah. They were they she's were not. Moved across the street. She's moved Real across the street, but hasn't the, done anything to her. Right. Yeah. yeah. So so okay. So we can just tag that as a as a question we need to resolve because obviously, uh, in those terms, the people at the properties that were substantially damaged. We abated for the full year. The very few people. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any other questions about the hotel itself? Okay. Now we can move on to the personal property. And I'm not sure. I was trying to go through and see, well, which is the personal property, which is the real estate? Personal property is going to tell you 800. There you go. Okay. Uh -huh. So the personal property that uh, this is for furniture and uh, fixtures for the restaurant and what else? 
So we, we kind of lost everything that was on the first floor and the basement, that's about it. You know, everything upstairs was still good. I mm -hmm. don't know, I'm not sure what the elevator would qualify under, you know, maybe building site maybe. Mm -hmm. But we lost all the furniture from the, from the function, uh, function space. We lost the furniture that was in the lobby. It was not substantial, but there was some there. Mm -hmm. We lost all the furniture from the restaurant. And we had to, uh, we lost a lot of equipments in the kitchen. Because of the, everywhere the, they were on the water, we kind of lost them. And we kind of beginning to find out that some of the other stuff not working too now, so. <laughs> Salad not working. Uh -huh. so, and so. Yeah, I have duplicates of the. There, there is, and and what John pointed out to me is that if you if you look at the uh, at the bill, the the one that's up in the upper corner where the account number starts with eight zero zero, that's the personal property uh, bill, and the total was two thousand eight hundred forty four dollars. Um, can you estimate? Because this personal property bill covers not only all the property on the first floor, but all the everything. furniture, TVs, and everything on the upper floors. Uh, do you have a way to estimate what uh, what fraction of the total? I think I think it's the, the, the kitchen equipments plays a bigger role on this one in the end of furniture from the restaurant. That's, I would probably say about maybe 45 percent to 50 percent, you know, mm -hmm. maybe about 45 percent. Take into consideration the basement um, yeah. stock and all that stuff. Down there. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not including all the inventories and all that also that we lost. But I mean, I'm just. I'm just looking into the. Just okay. Any questions from members of the board? Jack, is there? A I don't find anything in the papers I have with the value of the property. Right, I agree. I'm not seeing a value of the personal property. It, it's 317. Oh, okay, there we are. Yep. It's, it's four story on one part and six story on another. So even excluding and all plus the basement that's rented. Okay. Yeah. Just looking at the hotel. So on the four story part, there is only tenants on the second floor and first floor, and on the six story part, we have a tenant on the first floor, second floor, and sixth floor. So how how many floors other than the first floor do you have hotel stuff? Uh, fourth, fourth floor. Four, four floor yeah. But they used to store majority of the inventory was in the basement actually, uh, because not many enough storage rooms are not is not much of the mm -hmm. so. so did you did you you lose like extra furniture and stuff like that that was stored down in the basement? Yes, we did. So we did, but we don't have of knowing because it was all in the flood in the mud. You know, we did restore some guy just throw everything out, you know, and we don't know the count also what, what was given to us from the previous owners, actually. Sure. We have some count of that, but not much um, on that part, so I'm not even counting on those items, you know, mm -hmm. right now. Did you do any kind of insurance claim for that stuff that would have accounted for that? So, we have an insurance claim, but they don't cover anything in the basement, so all my loss that happened to, in the basement, it, it doesn't cover, and I mean, it's... Right now, for the for the some of the stuff, they still haven't paid 100 percent yet. You know, we still yeah. fighting with them. You know, that part. Mm -hmm. so. Okay. <coughs> and I, 
Are any more questions regarding the personal property claim, or are we ready to move on? Well, we've generally done personal property right away rather than waiting. Oh, good point. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. I guess my question is whether we feel comfortable just taking that, the base value of 45% of the amount, or do we want more documentation? I don't think there's going to be more documentation. Yeah. <laughs> so I would just entertain a motion for what anyone thinks is a fair abatement Tim I'll that we uh, abate 45% of the personal property for the year um, for 100 states is there a second second so that would be of the $2,844 Carrie um, did you mean for the whole entire tax even though it's been replaced and they have it now they have personal property back in there now? Is it replaced? So we're eight months in right now. Yeah, but they're about to open in the next couple of weeks. Okay. So presumably it's all been replaced. Close. More or less, yeah. We should all take a few work. stuff coming still, but um, <laughs> yeah. it's, 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 it, it will be replaced, that's, that's for sure, yeah. you know. Maybe not the same thing, but a little bit different, but it's the same. So you're thinking 45% for two thirds of the year? But I think we're talking about April 1st of last year, though, right? This Next year is July 1, or whatever. June 30, it's yeah. not April. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's July. So August. for, for, for the others, right, right. we've yeah. done the first two, yeah. 12 months. or it could be through April 1st this year, because that's when they're reopening everything. Yeah, yeah. That's when they're, right, which is yeah. eight months from of this tax year. Yeah. So that'd be two thirds. So since we're dealing in rough approximations anyways, maybe it would just make sense to pick a number like 35%. So 45% of two-thirds of the year? Yes, yeah. So 45% of the total is $1,280, and then we want two-thirds um, of that? Is are that we, are we miss, missing the math a little bit? Uh, if if we assume they're, they're good to go as of April 1st, that means that's... Three it's quarters. three quarters, not yeah. two thirds, yeah. because six months plus the first three months of of twenty four. And the restaurant isn't open in, until at least almost mid May. But the pro but the personal property is in there, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, no, not not yet. Not, not yet. Not yet. No, we supposed to be getting delivery tomorrow. Let's see. I mean, you know, they've been postponing the last few weeks, you know. So. Okay. Uh, Hopefully. So three quarters of 45 percent. Does that sound like a workable? So let's let's search. I just wanted to say this value that's on here is is what they filed April 1st of last year for this fiscal. Year. Yep. So we're not. We have to calculate it based on the correct value, which is not well, what is written on this here. Value. Well, I think we're just no, I don't think so. When we're doing abatement, it's it's the tax bill. And okay. so the tax bill is $2,844 for the full year. 45% of that is 1280. 75% of that is 960. 960. So you so is the motion to re, uh, Abate nine hundred sixty dollars in personal property tax. Yes. And is that second? That's seconded. Second. Uh huh. Any further discussion on that? Wait one second. Tell yeah. me why forty-five percent. That's how much they lost. So my numbers are coming out a little bit differently. I'm oh. sorry. <laughs> okay, so go ahead, oh, Carrie. Okay. So if um, so, the total bill for the year is twenty eight forty four, and so we're only talking about abating three quarters of the year. So three quarters of twenty eight forty four is twenty one thirty three. And so times point four five means okay. So maybe that is that what you said? Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, I you said 960. Yes. Okay. Okay. Never mind. Got it. <laughs> 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 
Always good to check. Yeah. So 9.59.85. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Everybody happy with that number? Yeah. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, oh, you know, before we uh, wrap up, and I know we're close to the end, but uh, I should ask the members who are appearing uh, remotely, uh, Sarah Carter and Palin Cohn, to identify themselves. Sarah Carter, we know that's what you said, even though you're muted. And Palin? Palin Cohn, this too. Great, thank you. Okay. So we've gone through that, and now the last item on the agenda is 8 Ferry Street. And this is the laundromat. Okay, and why don't you tell us about the damage to that property? Actually, we did not had any damage to that property from the flood, but I mean, so laundromat actually was mostly fed by the hotel from the, so there was income generating from, for the, from the local businesses as well as the hotel as well. I mean, we managed to keep all the employees there, but the revenues, I mean, income is like almost nothing, you know? So I, I wasn't sure if there's anything you guys can do on the taxes as well. That's that was one of the reasons why. I filed well, that's that. that's a very interesting question that we'll have to uh, uh, have have to consider. You know, um, the question is, can is that an abatement that we can consider attributable to the to the flood? Because this is a property that had no physical damage. It had economic losses based on, based lo on losing its biggest customer. Yes. And uh, does anyone have any questions to the taxpayer on this? Because we'd want to know what the what you're asking for in terms of an abatement and what the income loss was. Well, my income was from that one. It was generating like a little bit over three hundred thousand dollar, and so far we, we generated not even fifty thousand dollar right now. You know, one hundred fifty. You said no, not even fifty thousand dollar. Okay. Right now. So that's so we, the. It was projected to be over three hundred thousand. Yeah. And it's now. It's it's less than fifty thousand dollars so far. We have we have over there. Since, you've, since, since we you've acquired, acquired. Since we acquired it, yeah, since he owns it. But the income, I'm sorry, I just jumped in. No, it's okay, Mary. Um, the income was projected, I assume that 300 was for a year? Yes. And in the three, three quarters of a year that you've owned it, it's at 150. 50. 50. No, 50. Oh, 50, got it. So you've lost 250 is your testimony. Yeah, we projected a hotel was doing some, I think some giving somewhere around $175,000 to the long run it, and the rest of them was just a local business, you know, as well, which has been down as well, I'm not sure. And um, is there a distinction between the building itself and the business that is uh, conducted in that building? Uh, distinction means, I'm, I'm sorry, I don't understand. Um, that means is, is, is this a, a loss of the business, uh, business income or is it a loss of the value of the property, I guess? Well, I mean, we look at it, loss of the income has a loss of value as well. I mean, that's how we look at things. Mm -hmm. you know? So I'm not sure how the board, everybody looks at it, but if the business has no income, then I'm not sure what the value would be for the property is. Uh -huh. So that's, that's the only thing, you know. Mm -hmm. um, Tim, were you raising your hand there? Okay. 
that's going to be the value of the property from a business perspective as opposed to a, say, grand list perspective. Uh -huh. Yeah, I only look at it that way only because that's how we purchased the property back in July. So, I mean, that's, mm -hmm. that's the only reason why I say that right now. I assume that's not a category covered by the state bill. I, I assume that's right, yeah. yeah. So we'll figure that out like we figure everything else out at the end, I think. Does anyone have any? One. Sorry? It's an interesting one. It, it definitely yeah. is, yeah. Does anyone else have any other questions? Tim. So with the laundromat, because the hotel was a big user customer of it, um, in the future, are you going to still have the hotel laundry done there, or are you going to be doing it back in the main facility? We want to do it at the main facility, but there's some infrastructure has to be done for it. Okay. which we were not able to do at the moment right now, you know, also. So our plan was to do that as well, but uh, not at the moment, you know. So when we open the hotel, all the hotel laundry will be done by the moment. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm sure the reading of the, well, we can discuss it, I guess. We just will have to see whether this fits in under the statute for abatement. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Anything else? Okay, then I think we can suspend tonight's hearing and reconvene next Thursday at 6.30 p.m. And, and then uh, you, you obviously don't have to be here next, next week, but uh, then on the 11th we'll uh, go into what we call deliberative session and we'll discuss all the hearings we've heard and make, make decisions. And then the clerk will get them out to you. Thank you. Okay. Can I mention something else before yes. the leaves? Um, not for you guys, but oh, okay. um, the, the business you. the business taxes have hit the mail have hit the mail for, for business people. And some of the flood Thanks people. Thank Thanks for coming in. Um, some of the folks that have had to buy all new equipment are worried about getting tax bills because they were the forced for, for business property. Personal property. Yeah, they're worried about all this stuff. Yeah, they've had the restaurants got to have to buy. Yeah, they've had to buy new equipment, new furniture. So they're worried about their tax bills. Um, so, as the abatement board, we may have to consider possibly sending out tax bills equal to last year's values or something creative. So, just something to keep in mind because it's gonna it's gonna have to come from from the abatement board. If there's a a sort of blanket solution like that that's decided on. Couldn't that be something that could be decided at the council level like we did when we provided? I think it would have to come from the council, from what I understand. So yeah. that might be, if there's a one size fits all for that, that might come from there. And that's something I'm gonna look into this week with Jane and with uh, Charlotte on if we can do that or not. So we did something like that once before, right? Um, didn't we, Charlotte? There was some sort of one-off Everybody would get a one-off for, oh, I cannot remember to save my life. I'll think about it and I'll get mm -hmm. back to you. Because I know the, the tax bills are created from the grand list right. module. Right. So, yeah, I, I can't imagine that it would initially come from the Board of Abatement because we address abatement requests that come to us, but the you know, we've, we've got our city personal property tax that's based on uh, on value. And if there were a proposal for the, to treat it differently this year because of, of the hit it would have on people's uh, tax bill, I assume that would be something that would be brought to the council. That's, that just seems like the sensible, if the council just, wanted to tell the assessor send the bills out differently this year and this is how. I think that come, that's a policy decision for the council rather than. I was just thinking we get preemptively in head, ahead of it instead of getting hit with all these abatements again uh -huh. when the bills hit the mail. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, there's a meeting next week. 
<laughs> yeah. It's also just for the properties that were impacted. Right. Correct. Yeah. So we have to figure out how to parse that out too. So that may be the identified faces. Yeah. So something to think about. Well, another very interesting question. <laughs> has done something like this in the past. Well, maybe 2011, 1992, uh, I don't know. Well, that's something to look into between now and when the property tax bills go up. I guess it could say, I don't think it's unprecedented, but that doesn't necessarily matter, so. And yeah, because you, well, I don't, I don't know what the policy should be here. You know, there's, do we treat this person who decided to buy a new, new refrigerator because they wanted a new refrigerator differently from the store that had to buy a new refrigerator because they were flooded? And do you treat it differently if insurance covered it versus right. not? That's right. Yeah. And some of the complaints I, that I have gotten are from people that have not had to pay in years because they have old equipment. Now they're being forced into buying new equipment and are now going to have to pay tax where they haven't in previous years. Do they have a sense of how small a I personal property I think they bill do. is? This, this person has not seen a bill ever. Yeah. Because, you know, you know, these guys had $300,000 worth of personal property and a $3,000 bill. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So. <clears throat> yeah, it's way more than three hundred thousand or more. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. And we're only giving them a nine hundred dollar break. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> you know, they only got a nine hundred dollar break. Yeah. So. yeah. <clears throat> okay. Well, that's something to think about. And I think we are done, which means we are in recess, not uh, adjourned. Thanks, everybody.